almost 500 days alcohol free. That is what our guest today, David Holdmeyer, is almost 500 days alcohol free. Incredible. That's 16 plus months. David is a 36 year old CFO at a consulting company in St. Louis, Missouri. He is married, has two daughters. And in this conversation, David and I are going to discuss how David said he felt before he joined our Stop Drinking program, which is called Project 90, his fears going into the program and giving up alcohol, how David felt when he completed his 90 days alcohol-free, how he then felt the remainder of that year remaining alcohol-free, and then some of the most surprising things that came up for David along the journey. David, great to have you here, mate. How are you doing? Yeah. James, I'm excited to be here and excited to hear the uh, the 500 days. Yeah, 500 days. I mean, could you ever believe that you would get to 500 days alcohol free, given your drinking habits before you stopped? I did not. I thought uh, going into it, I thought 90 days was a lot. So <laughs> here we are, and, and it's yeah. never, never been better. So I'm happy to be here. I'll just give a our listeners a couple of the highlights here of what you actually created. And then as we go into the conversation, I'll get you to elaborate on that. But David is down 50 pounds. He went down, he, sorry, he went from 225 pounds to 175 pounds as a result of not drinking alcohol. His blood pressure and heart rate down uh, went down 15 beats a minute, 15 beats a minute. And uh, he says his family life is the best he's ever had. So we'll get to those highlights in just a moment. But first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself and what life was like when you were drinking. Yeah, a little bit about myself. So I think you did a you did a nice introduction there. So I don't need to dive too much more into that. But uh, big, big family person. Um, I have a five year old and a three year old who are about to turn six and four. Uh, so a lot of time with my family. Um, yeah, before so before you know, I thought my drinking habits were normal. Uh, I grew up in a in a small town where that was kind of the norm. And uh, so I didn't really know what the other side could be like without drinking. Um, so before it's really hard to understand and know where you are until you until you give something up and you can see the other side and spend time on understanding how good it can be. Um before I was, like you said, I mean, 50 pounds heavier. That's just a ton of weight. So just physically, I was in poor shape. Um, sleep was poor. Um, my relationships weren't the best. Uh, I'll get to that more at, at the uh, other pieces. Um, way more high strung. Um, realizing now I was just stressed a lot for no reason. High strung, anxious. Some of those things that alcohol is actually, um, you know, a lot of people think it helps reduce your stress or helps you ease. Uh, I think it was accelerating a lot of that for me. So um, yeah, I wasn't working out a ton. I was just kind of in a rough patch um, before entering your program. Do you know why you got into that rough patch? I don't know that I can pinpoint one thing. Um, it definitely accelerated during COVID, the COVID timeframe. Uh, a lot of time at home, uh, just had two little kids and felt like I was stressed um, and it felt like it could be an outlet for me. Uh, it just became a habit um, and something that I didn't really think about. All the, you know, I thought about a lot, but didn't think about it as being a bad habit until, until it was. Um, so. I hear that a lot actually from relatively new parents that when they have kids under the age of five, I mean, a kid under the age of five, but in your case, kids that, you can feel like you're always putting out fires or you're always racing to do something. And then there's a lot of logistical conversations with partners and it can get very tiring, especially when you are continuing to try to drive your career forward and do a good job in your position in a company, or if you're an entrepreneur, is that possibly what happened with you? Yeah, I think that's some of it, James. I also think, um, you know, having two kids, which is a big change in life. Kid, one kid is a big change. Two kids, a big change. Um, we had the pandemic and I was working from home. So it was a lot of different things that changed in my life, uh, kind of around that same time, two or three year period where 
a lot of big changes uh, for me. And it's uh, it's kind of just growing up, right? Understanding what you know, what's what's going on here. There's so many things going on. There's so many places I need to be. So many things I need to do. Um, and at the end of the day, saying, okay, I really need to to relax. I, I earned something to relax, or I need a I need a reward at the end of the day for doing all this. Um, that type of thinking that that led to some some drinking. And what was the quote unquote reward that you consumed most nights, and what quantity of it? Yeah, so I, I drank a lot of wine. Um, red or white? Started, uh, red. Um, it started, you know, I actually didn't start drinking until, this is going to go back a little bit, but I didn't start drinking until after high school. Um, and then I, I drank a lot of, during college, uh, which felt like the normal thing to do in college. Um, and then it kind of just gradually, I can, I can now looking back, it gradually progressed. Um, up until kind of what I was telling you about with COVID, but it was, you know, weekends and then it was one night a week, happy hour. Um, and then it just became, okay, well now I can have a glass or two of red wine, something at the end of the day. And then that became more and more. So it was more quantity and more frequency, uh, when I knew that something needed to change. Hmm. I love how you said, uh, you know, actually, I didn't start drinking until after high school. As well, if, which, which, as if uh, everyone drinks in high school. <laughs> which is common. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it seems like it is. A, unfortunately, it is a common thing. It is. It is. It isn't it crazy. I mean, it seems crazy to me that society is in such a place where we actually have to say, oh, interesting fact. I didn't drink until after high school. <laughs> yeah, still still not legally, but it was after high school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you were drinking more in COVID. Uh, and then in 2021, as we kind of came out of COVID, I guess you'd put on a few LBs by that stage, right? Yeah. So yeah. did you notice that as it was happening or did it all of a sudden, all of a sudden you looked in the mirror and you went, damn, I put on a few few pounds here. What's what's going on? I, I definitely noticed it while it was happening. I mean, even buying bigger clothes, right? I mean, we were putting on that much weight, but it, it never really, I was justifying it different ways um and now looking back i was like oh my gosh um i've got pictures from two and a half years ago in my basement that are framed of me and my family and i'm like i like actually keeping it up there because it reminds me of of where i was um and how far i've come so it, it did now looking back it's like oh wow i really did let myself go uh but in that time it's just it was justification rewards those type that type of mindset that kept me moving I know that you said, or rather I said that you lost 50 pounds from when you stopped drinking, but did you put on 50 pounds in a similar time period? Like, was it from the start um, of COVID until the end, like a couple of years, 18 months? I mean, that seems like a lot, 50 pounds. No, I mean, it was, it was gradual over uh, probably six years or so. Six over years, six years, was it? Six, yeah. 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 Six or eight. So years. maybe it was kind of more like 10 pounds a year, a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Little yeah. Bit more. Like, yeah. Yeah, it didn't all like, happen at once. Like compound interest. It just, <laughs> That's right. It yeah, not, up, a, right? not a good it's, way, though. <laughs> yeah. You referenced your wife, uh, Abby, with yep. me um, before we hit record here. What was she saying to you about this very noticeable weight gain over those years? Yeah, I think she was, uh, she mentioned a thing or two. She, she unfortunately was uh, tiptoeing around a lot of those conversations because I would overreact if, if she would bring something up around, um, my, you know, my drinking or my this or that, um, I would have an overreaction to it. So I, she was unfortunately tiptoeing around those conversations, having them whenever she felt like she could, but, um, she definitely is one of the main reasons that, um, I started to make this change, um, her and my, my two little ones. Um, so I, I am just forever grateful for her for continuing to push me and, and bring that up to me. May I ask you to la elaborate a little on how she would try to broach the subject with you? Like, what would she say? And then can you give us an example of, in more specificity, if you would, on how you would react? And I think this is an interesting question, and I'm interested in your answer, because this is a very common thing that happens with spouses who are married or partnered with someone who either is drinking too much yeah. or is letting themselves slide or drift 
how does someone you know really broach the subject without the partner reacting as opposed to responding and it seems like you're suggesting that you did react as opposed to respond so if i just ask the question you know how would she broach the subject and then how did you react yeah so i'll give you a couple um small examples and then maybe we can go you know a little larger after that but just uh specific things like out to dinner and i would order my third glass of wine and she'd make a comment like do you really need that like do our, what do we like why why do you need that and I would, I would say, oh, it's Friday or, oh, you know, it's been a rough week or just, you know, this is, I would say, this is normal. This is just, you know, just let me be. This is, it's fine. Um, but that's a specific situation where, you know, you could say that in every, every scenario, right? Like out at a party or coming home from something like a dinner and then pouring a drink after that. It's like, really, what's the point? Um and I would just get frustrated and overreact to those comments just because of my state at that time, I guess. Um, and probably deep down because I knew it wasn't right and I knew she she was right. Um, so yeah, that, that's what comes to mind with it. But it is, I, I see it now that I'm where I am um, with other couples and you can see people, they don't want to approach it. Um, it is hard for people to ask those questions or to to really push someone in, dire in a direction because ultimately that person has to want to do something and make a change. Was it Abby's questioning that led you to book a call with our organization, Alcohol Free Lifestyle, as far back as 2021? Or was it something that you decided you were going to do yourself without her probing without her questioning without her seemingly disapproval no she definitely helped get me there um it was it was a com you know one conversation that multiple conversations but one in particular that stands out that i knew it was time for me to just make some changes and um i just looked online at something that could potentially help me and found found your program so mm. is there something specifically that she said in that conversation that really did get you moving in to action and booking the call? Um, well, she actually, um, so it was after a weekend, or I, yeah, it was after a weekend and I, you know, I kind of went out and partied, partied a little too much. Um, and she- had, With her or without her? No, without her. I was, I was with gone. friends the, or? Yeah, I was gone for the weekend um, with friends. And uh, yeah, she actually, um, called my parents and talked to them about it, which I was, uh, not happy with, but, uh, nothing but love and respect for, for Abby and my parents. So when all three of them sat down with me and said, Hey, we, whatever the, whatever this is, we just want you to figure it out, you know, whether it's, you know, whether it is a problem quote, or it's, you just, we want you to get healthier. We want you to be the best version of yourself. And having that conversation, I was like, yep, I, I agree. Was that almost like what they call an intervention? Yeah. Yeah. You could say an intervention of sorts. Yeah. Did you walk in and they were sitting on the sofa facing you and go, Sit no, there. no, it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> quite like that, but, but cl close enough. Yeah. yeah. But no, I mean, you know, and it's, it's, uh, whenever you're, you're loved, you know, the people you love the most are saying, Hey, we're seeing that this is not you, um, from a, habits character perspective because i wasn't always being honest you know with with abby and others so mm. uh, we know that's not who you are something's got to change mm -hmm. so then the interesting thing is is that you went okay i'm going to make a change you went online you found our organization alcohol free lifestyle and its program project 90 you then got on a call with our enrollment director at the time jim yeah and you did not enroll well, no. So this was this was the second time. Oh, this was the second yeah. time. Okay. So the first, well, the hang first, on a second. Let's yeah. go back to 2021. Yeah. Because you did book a call and you spoke with yeah. us, flirting with the idea of joining us then. Yeah. So what? 2021 was just Abby and I talking, um, and I knew that I should do something, um, and I decided against it. So I. I, I Why did you decide it. against it? Because you entertained the idea, you spoke to us about the possibility, and then you ghosted us. You, you actually didn't say, no, I'm not going to do it. You just disappeared. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I don't remember why, to be honest. Like, I don't know if there was a specific thing, if I was nervous to do it, if it was, I don't know. Um, so I just said, you know, I'll stop for a couple months. On your own. Yeah. And I did. Um, and then, you know, so things were kind of okay. And, and as you know, better than most, um, and something I learned through your program is it, it comes back to the same way it was, uh, whether it takes a couple of weeks to get there or a couple of years to get there, it's going to get there. Um, so it did. So I, I took a little extended break and then kind of got back to it. Mm. Then you had the intervention a year later or a year after you had initially picked up the phone and spoke to us. And then you picked up the phone again, reached out to Jim on my team, and then yep. you enrolled. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Okay. And why did you do it this time as opposed to a year earlier? Do you think, do you think? Um, I, I was more convinced myself that I wanted to change as well. Um, I mean, it's at the end of the day, you know, we talk a lot about why are you doing this or having a why of why you're doing what you're doing. And I thought going into it, I was like, okay, I'm doing this for my family, for my kids, but really for me, I mean, I, I got, I need to figure some stuff out, get healthy. Um, I was convinced I needed some changes too. So I think just having that extra push and then me knowing that something, you know, I wanted to change as well. Mm. All right. Great. So then you obviously had some fear going into a, who may not wear, we have a 90 day stop drinking process, which is called project 90. The university of Washington conducted a scientific study on our process uh, in the first quarter of 2023. They took 163 participants through our project 90 process. And the end result was, is that it reduced drinking by 98%. And that's just the same process that we've been running now since 2018. Uh, and we've got people who enroll in that process every single day. And so we're about to discuss that process now uh, with David, which is exactly the same process which we have running uh, today as we're recording this in 2024. So for our listener who maybe is unaware of that, what were your fears going into it and what actually was your experience like during those 90 days? Yeah. So my fears were somewhat unrelated to the project 90 itself, to the program itself. My fears were more related to um, just not having alcohol in my life. Uh, it became such a big piece. So, you know, not being able to go have fun, not being able to hang out with my friends, not, um, people judging me for not, for not doing it, for not fitting in, um, vacations, not being as much fun, no way to de-stress after work and just relax. Um, those are some of the big things. Just, I, I sit here and smile now, um, looking back at those fears, but they were real. So I know people who are, you know, who are considering your program or other, other ways to, to stop they're real. And, uh, I understand I, I felt it, but it, uh, you can get over it. And what was the experience like when you were going through the yeah. 90 days? Yeah. What did you yeah. receive? What was helpful? What wasn't helpful? You know, were you triggered during it? Yeah. So it was, uh, just such a great experience, uh, the 90 days and the program. Um, I learned so much from the coaches um, about, you know, alcohol business, you, you name it. I mean, obviously it's focused on, on alcohol, but you learn a lot about yourself. You learn a lot about, uh, the way people act. You learn a lot about professional life. Um, but bring brought into that community of people was really the key for me. I mean, there were so many, um, people that I connected with and that I still keep in touch with that I would call my, my close friends, um, from that program. And so having a community of people who you, uh, respect who are um, professionally successful, who are parents, who are doing all those things that you see yourself doing. Um, it makes it really, really good to connect with those people. It makes it an easier journey. Um, and so it was, it was, uh, 
would say a little challenging just to to cut it off, but it gets it just got easier and easier. And one of my things that I really focused on during the 90 days was um, just not drinking and everything else was fine. So if I wanted to eat extra candy and eat whatever I wanted, do whatever I wanted during those 90 days, I allowed myself to uh, without any guilt or without any remorse, you know, it was like, okay, just focus on this one thing, remove this one thing that's holding you back and then see where it goes from there. How much of the early part of, Project 90 felt like you were having to rely on brute willpower or motivation or white knuckling it. And at what stage did that fade away and it started to feel simple or easy? Um, yeah, I mean, really, maybe the first week or two felt like I was a little bit like white, if you want to use white knuckling or like forcing it, um, just as a getting it out of the habit and out of that routine. But after that, I learned a lot of, of ways and tools and had the community there to where I didn't feel that way. Um, I had a plan going, you know, something we talked a lot about during the 90 days. I had a plan uh, for most every situation I was going to be in, um, which kind of helped at the beginning. You know, if you're going to go somewhere, be a part of something to have some sort of plan and, and ready to go or some sort of response to why people are asking all these questions on, hey, you're weird. Why don't you drink? Um to have some sort of response, you know, those, those little things that actually help a lot when you're early on and um, feeling some of those pressures. And it just does, it, it got easier and easier, I would say, um, really after six months, um, it felt like it was kind of just who I was. Um, I really appreciate the, you know, the 90 days was very key and that was my goal. Um, but for anyone, don't want to overwhelm anyone who's out there, but really giving it that full year is, is where it's at. Um, because a lot of the hard, good work that I've done really started out, say, eight to 12 months, where you really get to start reaping a lot of the benefits of being clear minded and having the energy, being back in shape if you're out of shape. Um, it does take time to rewire your your brain and your habits and learn new stuff and all that. So um, I really appreciate the the beyond 90 and, and having that year mark as well um, because I understand the benefits of now of making it that year. Yeah, because um, when you graduated from Project 90, you then went into our secondary program, which is called Beyond 90, which is what do you get to create now that alcohol is out of your, your life? So what were some of the feelings or insights that – came up for you post the first 90 days in those, you know, remaining nine months of that first year? Well, I don't know. We would have to schedule like two more calls for that. But uh, in a lot of ways, you know, James, I feel like I've just um, gotten to start over in some, you know, some things. It's like finding new hobbies or getting back into things, um, setting new goals, personal goals for myself, business goals, those kind of things um, that I've just been spending my time on. Um, really after that, I would say, you know, after that initial three to six months, it's okay. Now I can spend more time on, on getting deeper. And some of those areas where you went deeper besides business were what? Yeah. So, I mean, I, we talked a little bit about it, but with my, my personal health, um, spent a lot of time on just getting back in shape, um, uh, you mentioned the weight, but just, you know, walking, running, lifting weights. Um, so my health is one area. Um, relationships, just reconnecting with some people, um, building deep relationships with some people, meeting new people, a lot of cool new people. Um, yeah, so those are some of the big areas. Hmm. How did your relationship with your wife, Abby, change? Yeah. So, so two things come to mind. One, I don't, you know, I don't know that we've been in a better spot than we are today. So um, that's just fantastic. And two, you know, I, I talked to her and we both agreed this, this past year. So I turned 36 recently and was reflecting on, <laughs> on 35. Um, and it, it was the best year I've had. So 
I would say, you know, that's not a coincidence to some of the changes I made. Um, so yeah, I mean, those are pretty, pretty big statements to make. Uh, so I'm just grateful for that. What has Abby actually shared with you as to what she's noticed about either you or your relationship with her in this past year? Yeah. I mean, it's, I'm not laughing at that. This is a small thing, but she said, you know, everything has changed. You know, you, everything you you're doing has changed. You've changed like from a physical perspective so much. And, and just, um, you know, we, we are, we are in such better spot, just calmer, better conversations, spending more time, quality time together. Um, and I think allowing us to be better, better parents as well. Just on the parenting, how are you a better father to your two daughters? Yeah, it's been great. Um, I never, I never try to regret anything in my life. I think everything does happen for a reason. I know that sounds cliche to say, but I do. Um, and I am happy that I, I got to this point because I was letting a lot of time pass with them, just kind of zoned out at nights or getting by on the, you know, going out on the weekends, a lot of time that I wasn't present with them. I was there um, and I was with them a lot, but I wasn't always present. So that was, that's one of the main things I'm seeing is I'm just, I'm present with them uh, every chance I can. And, I, and, you know, there's still distractions in the world. There's cell phones, there's work, there's all this other stuff, but I am way more present. Um, just do a lot of fun stuff with them. And, you know, we just got back from a week vacation uh spring break and i was just able to to connect with them to spend time with them on the beach and really enjoy those moments mm. is there any part of you that misses drinking because you're almost 500 days alcohol free as we're recording this and a lot of questions i receive include um when do you make that decision to never drink again so have you made that decision? Are you still leaving that open-ended? Where are you at with that? Yeah, how I approach that, um, I I don't ever see myself drinking again, but I, I don't make the statement I'm never drinking again. Um, I know I'm not going to today or tonight. <laughs> I wake up tomorrow and I, I do it again because um, you never know what's going to happen in life. But I, I never want to. I've seen all the benefits from it. Um, so that's how I that's how I think through that. Um, what was the other question? I think I missed the other question. There might have been two. It was just, when did you make the decision, if you ever did, that this was going to be a lifelong commitment, lifelong lifestyle? Yeah, I mean and I think you also asked, like, do you miss it? And it's, you know, it's interesting because sure. Sometimes it's like, Hey, I want to go zone out with the friends for four hours and drink and not think about anything. And it's like, okay, think through that. What's going to happen? Well, I'm going to feel terrible. And I'll probably end up back to where I was, a couple, you know, it's just a matter of time. Cause I know, uh, I know from a lot of the work, and this is one one good thing of many that I learned through uh, through the program was you know moderation really is a myth, if uh, you know for a lot of people. So um, <clears throat> I just think through that and I say, man, things are so good right now. I don't I don't ever want to go back to how it was. So um, even if you know it sounds nice for a couple hours, what whatever the reason is that day that maybe that pops in my head to say this sounds nice. I'm able to think through it just for a second and say, okay, yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, if that makes sense. Well, you've actually got real experience from when you spoke with us back in 2021, seemingly about to enroll. And then at the last minute, you disappeared and kind of changed your mind, I guess, internally. And maybe you persuaded yourself that you could do it on your own. Is that what happened? Like what was going on in your mind then right at the moment where you had a choice to make you're going to enroll and get some professional support or you'll just carry on doing what you've been doing um what changed a second like what changed yeah well what what 
what was going on in your mind that made you choose no, moderation? What was going on in your mind that made you choose to do it on your own the first time, even faced with this choice of actually getting professional support? Yeah, I think it was uh, it was somewhat that I could moderate. It was somewhat that, you know, back to one of my fears, I never really wanted to not be able to do it. Um, so I, I felt like if I if I said, okay, I need help, that may that meant, <clears throat> you know, I was labeled as someone who needed help and could never do it again. Um, and I looked at it as that, right? I never could um, as like a bad thing. Um, so I think it was, it was that mindset. And now I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to do it. Um, so it's interesting to, to see that shift. Mm. And you didn't feel like you were labeled as someone who needed help, even though you chose the help. Yeah, I don't feel labeled. Um, I, I think it's like now that I've been through it, it's like anything, if you're going to make a big change in your life it is good to get coaching and help and whatever you need. Um, there's no shame in that. And that's what, you know, if a professional athlete needs help getting in better shape or eating healthier. They get someone to help them with it. And this is mm -hmm. something I needed. I obviously needed some help with in my life and um, I was able to find you guys to help me and have no regrets of that at all. Mm. Yeah. Just on the coaching part i mean no olympic gold medalist ever won a gold medal without a coach yep. to my knowledge <laughs> yep. i mean alexander the great conquered the whole known world by age 31 but even he was mentored by by the great philosopher aristotle for two years and if you look further than aristotle was mentored by plato and plato was mentored by socrates einstein i'm sorry einstein uh, had dinner with a mentor every Thursday. If you do the research on his life, uh, Bill Gates had Ed Roberts, Oprah Winfrey had Mary Duncan, Steve Jobs had the financier, Robert Friedland, Warren Buffett had Benjamin Graham. Mark Zuckerberg was mentored by Steve Jobs, Sean Parker, Martin Luther King learned from Benjamin Mays. Tom Hanks had Rawley Farnsworth. Denzel Washington was coached by Sidney Poitier. I mean, these are well-known people who decided that oh, maybe I'll invest in a coach. Maybe I'll invest in a mentor. Seems to have worked out for them. And yet it's interesting, is it? Because even you had such resistance to hiring a coach or professional services for fear that you would be labeled that you had a problem isn't that yeah. so interesting human psychology yeah yeah it's so interesting and and you know for the most part it's like <laughs> when you get into people you know people judging or people whatever they have to say no one really cares what you're doing it seems you know people care about themselves people might ask you like hey are you not drinking tonight or why aren't you drinking you say oh, i'm not right now or i'm not drinking or i I don't drink anymore. Okay. They go get themselves something and move on. Right. They don't really care that much. Um, so I was, I think I had way too much concern with what other people thought. Um, going yeah. into this. Yeah. And maybe even too much concern on what you thought. Yeah. About, about many things. Yeah. Yeah. Which, which I really appreciate the uh, doing this podcast with you. I, you know, I'd actually push this off for a while because I still had some hesitation on and concern on uh, what people thought. And, you know, it's, it, it's to each their own. I've been I've been fairly um, quiet about my journey, um, not not hiding it in any way. Um, if people ask me, I, I talk to them about it and tell them what's going on. But I've been quiet as far as not, you know, nothing big, no. Facebook posts, that kind of stuff. I keep to myself. Um, but I, I'm happy to be doing this. And hopefully if there's anyone out there who's considering it, you know, uh, hopefully this helps with it's, it's been a great decision. Um, and I just can't say that enough.
Well, thank you, David. I appreciate you having the courage to come on the podcast and share your journey with us. 500 days alcohol-free, 50 pounds lost, a stronger marriage by the sounds of it, and uh, you're seemingly a better father to your two daughters as well. So congratulations and uh, wish you all the best on your alcohol-free journey from here. Yeah, thanks, James. It's been great, and I appreciate you and, and what you put together, and we will always stay in touch.